In our previous examples, we spoke about how we apply different types of dimensions to drawings, such as linear dimensions, or aligned dimensions, or angular dimensions. What I didn't do with that is I didn't talk about dimension styles, or what happens when your dimensions are put onto a drawing and they don't look quite how they should do. And that's exactly what we've got here in this example. You can see we've got what look like just red lines on here, when in actual fact they're dimensions. And if I just spend a few moments zooming in, you can see as I get closer and closer, we've actually got a value here of 2700. And it's that value which is our dimension. And if I go all the way off to the end of the line as well, the extension line, and we zoom in, you can see we've got some dimension arrows as well. So what we need to do is we need to change the scale of those. But what we've got to do is we've got to change the scale and make it work for this drawing as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work, um, I might work in paper space, I might move back actually to model space, but I think for the moment I'll just stay in paper space. I'll select this viewport and I'll make sure that I've switched to model space. And what that will do is that will enable me to actually select just one of these uh, dimensions as and when I need to. So the next thing I need to do is to bring up the dimension styles manager. Uh, and what that will do is that will allow me to create a new style for the dimensions that I can then apply back onto these dimensions that I've got down here. Now the dimension styles manager is available from this tiny little button up here on your screen. It's not particularly well marked. In fact, all it is is just what looks like an arrow in the corner. Um, it, it's probably the most poorly marked button I've ever seen. So really you've got to know that it's there. So do pay attention that this is where we get our dimension style manager from. This is where we get our text star manager from, and this is where we get our multi-leader star manager from. We'll come and talk about multi-leaders uh, in a moment when we've spoken about the dimension styles here. So I'm going to click on this button, and it will bring up my dimension star manager. And with ISO 25, which is a fairly standard um, dimensioning standard selected, I'm going to say new. And that will come up and say copy of ISO 25. Now, we could obviously call that whatever we wanted to, um, but I'm going to call it Oh, actually, I'm just going to leave it as it is. One thing that I am going to do is I'm going to click on this button here called Annotative. And annotation scaling is something which is going to be hugely important to you when you're working with dimensions and something that we're just going to start sort of being introduced to now. So once I've done that, I'm then going to press Continue. And that brings up yet another dimension box, which is the, uh, the new dimension style dialog. And this is where I'm going to set all my sort of properties for my dimension style. Now most of the time we can be reasonably lazy about this um, and we can stay with pretty much what we've got here as the defaults. Things you might want to change though are things like your arrow heads where I might want to change those to look like an architectural tick. So you can see here we've got architectural ticks here. And I might decide that I want to change my arrow size. So I might want to make that four for example. In that case, you get very large arrowheads there, or I might just make that three. I can choose whether I want the center mark to appear for my radiuses, so I could have a line there, or I could make that none. Personally, I prefer none. From my text, I can say I can have it aligned with the dimension line, or I can make it an ISO standard. And I quite like the ISO standard. I prefer having my dimensions as clearly marked and as straight as possible. So that works for me. And what we've also got here is the text height. And that's going to be the text height on screen. So I'm going to make that about four. And my text color will be uh, by layer, as will uh, my style. Now I've got certain styles here that are already um, defined. I might change that to be Romans. There we go. And then I've got my fit tab. Now I've already set this to be annotative, so I don't really need to worry about that too much. So I can look at my primary units. Now I've got here my unit format is decimal and my precision is down to 0 0.00. Again, absolutely fine. I could pick different types of unit format if I wanted to. If I wanted architectural, we'll probably end up with feet and inches. Um, or I'll just go back to decimal. There we go. That's probably a bit easier. I've also got alternate units in here, and I can display these alternate units if I need to. 
So I could pick those as being, these could then be uh, architectural if I wanted them to be. Uh, or we can turn that off because things do get a little bit um, mucky. Tolerances are also very useful. Um, deviation, so within limits of plus or minus, so I could give an upper value or a lower value. So I could say upper value of um, plus five, lower value if you come down of, I don't know, zero. So plus or minus, there you go, five or four. Um, scaling height one will leave that position for these could be in the middle so there you go there's your text is in the middle of those tolerances there or you could have it slightly more traditional at the bottom so pretty much everything that you would want to do to create a drawing by hand or create your dimensions by hand is in here uh, I'm actually going to say none for that though I'm going to okay that and I'm going to make this my set current and then I'm going to close. Now you'll notice that that hasn't changed any of my dimensions on my drawing. Okay, That's because I haven't changed any of these to be that specific dimension. So if I just highlight all of those and you'll notice here we've got an ISO 25. If I change that to be copy of ISO 25 okay, it doesn't look like much has happened but if I come down here and I turn on my annotation visibility and I change my viewport scaling to 1 to 50 and maybe move that across there a little bit you can see that now this viewport has been scaled to a, to a specific 1 to 50 size and I also turned on the visibility of my annotation and I also turned on the update for it once that happened, as soon as I set my viewport to be a 1 to 50 scale, look at this, these automatically scale to be the right size. And if I set this to be 1 to 100, so I'll scale the drawing to be 1 to 100, you'll notice that the text itself still stays the same size whilst the drawing scales. That's the important thing. If I set this to 1 to 20, yeah, 1 to 20, and I'll have to pan this across again, my text is the same size. So that's the really interesting thing and the really important thing about annotation scaling. Uh, and just to sort of introduce it to you there as, as to what it is and how powerful it is, it means that I can have my drawing at any size I want, but my text stays the same size no matter what scale my drawing is, because the dimensions are set with a dimension scale, or with a dimension style rather, which is said to be annotative, which then defines how high that text should be on the paper no matter what size the piece of paper no matter what size the scale of the viewport so that's an introduction to dimension styles and we'll be looking at a uh, few things uh, later on to do with dimensions further on in this course